Welcome back to another episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your very own drop tower combo. Now this consists of multiple drop towers all operating independently of each other, but actually functioning as one ride with just one queue line. Now some real world examples of these rides are the Giant Drop at Six Flags Great America, and also Zumanjaro, which is attached to the support structure of the King Ka roller coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. In this tutorial, we're going to be using some tricks found from my other videos, like my ride combos tutorial where I showed you how to have multiple vehicles operating independently of each other, and also my giant slide tutorial where we copied stations so that we could have multiple tracks all operating out of the same station. Now to get started, we're going to use the Roto Drop ride, but please note that whichever direction this arrow is facing, the ride vehicles are going to face the other direction. And now we're going to turn on the following cheats, allow chain lifts and all track types, allow building tracks at invalid heights, unlock operating limits, allow arbitrary ride type changes, show vehicles from other track types, and disable vehicle limits. Now this step is optional, but we're going to turn the chain lift on, and we're going to build our tower all the way up, and for the last two pieces, turn the chain lift off, and just build them normal, add the entrance and exit, and we have our ride. And now we're going to change the ride vehicles to the lay down roller coaster, but you could also use the flying roller coaster. And we just want one train for now with one car per train. And we'll make sure we are in free fall drop mode. And now we can change the ride type to the vertical drop coaster. And then we can go back to the operating mode and we can change the chain lift speed. Now this is optional. I like to go with something like seven or eight miles per hour, but we'll change the ride back to the roto drop and we can test it. And you will see that once the ride vehicle leaves the station it's going to speed up right when it hits that chain lift so it's going now at eight miles per hour and then it will slow down right at the top and then it will wait and then eventually drop but we will encounter a problem because the chain lift will constantly try to pull the vehicle upwards so if i open the tile inspector we can actually see what's happening here so the vertical track piece actually takes up two different tiles so if you can see here i'm actually selecting that third tile and turning the chain lift off but it's not affecting the ride vehicle so i can turn it back on but we actually want to move over one tile so you can see here this is the tile we're selecting and if i go all the way up to the top and take the third track piece from the top, we can see that the chain lift is turned on, and if we turn it off, you can see that the ride vehicle drops down, but still is able to go up. So I'm just gonna keep turning off the chain lifts on this tile until the ride vehicle reaches the bottom. If you wanna learn more about how this works, you can check out my Speedy Tower Rides tutorial where I go into more detail about the game mechanics. But here we can see the ride vehicle speeding up as it hits the chain lift, moving to the top, slowing down at the top, and it's gonna wait for the drop, and then it's gonna drop and slow down nicely before the station that is because that chain lift we have a few of them still turned on which helps slow it down i think it just looks a little bit nicer than the normal roto drop that drops pretty quick and slams into the station but again messing with the chain lifts like that was just an optional step but now we are going to change the ride type to the vertical drop coaster and then close the ride and hit the construction button now we're going to build a vertical to steep track piece and then close the construction window and open the tile inspector and to select this track piece you can hold down the control button and then click on the track piece. Otherwise, you select the tile at the bottom and then find the track piece that's at the top of the tile inspector order. But once that's selected, lower the base height just one unit. So we just lowered it one. And then now right click on that so we can open the construction window and hit the back button. And we are going to turn on disable clearance checks. And then we are basically going to build a vertical track all the way down to the surface level right here. Build that and then we can close the construction window and then open the tile inspector and select the top track piece and then raise it one unit so it's back in its original place and that is going to be our ride layout. So now we open the scenery manager plugin. If you don't have it, the link is in the video description and then turn off surface here and then hit the select button. We need to select both tile pieces that the track occupies, so these two here. So select both of those and then hit the copy button and then now we are going to paste it, but first we're gonna rotate it. So hit the rotate button here, and then don't put it here on this tile, but one over. So right there, click, then rotate it again. So here's the middle piece, so go one off of that right here, 
and then rotate it one more time and then move it over and there we go this is going to be our tower with one track on each side and now close the plugin and hit the escape button so it stops the paste and open the construction window and build a steep right turn and then a straight piece of track and then now go to this right piece here and now we're gonna do a straight piece of track there. This is a little bit confusing, so bear with me. So now delete that turn we had previously built and then go forward and build a left steep turn and then a straight piece of track here. And then go back to this one and go backwards and rebuild that right turn right there. And that's all we need to do. I know this looks confusing, but bear with me. I'm gonna hit the pause button and then go to the ride vehicles and set it to four trains and then hit the test button and they're all gonna spawn at that one station on top of each other here. Now open the edit ride vehicles plugin. If you don't have it, the link is in the video description. Hit the select button and select one of those vehicles. So now we have train one selected. And so now we need to move them into position. So I'm gonna open the tile inspector and we need to make sure that these tracks are in the right position. It can be a little tricky, so it might take some trial and error, but we want this straight piece of track to be the lowest in the tile inspector order of the three track pieces and this left-hand turn to be in the middle. So it looks like that's right. So the lowest one at that base height is the straight one. So that is correct. So then now we can go to the plugin and then with train one, we can set the multiplier to 10 and then go to track progress and we're gonna move it up. And so once it gets here, it should go to the left. And then now we go backwards with track progress and it should go on that straight piece of track. And we'll bring it all the way down to this other side of the tower. Now with that done, we can go to train two and then go back to the tile inspector. And we need to change things up now. So I want the other steep turn. So I need to select this one here and I'm gonna rotate it twice. So the train will go to that back tower. And so we need to lower it to the bottom position of the three track pieces in the tile inspector order. And then the middle one is that straight piece of track, but we don't want that. So go up here to the other left-hand turn and move that to the second position. So the train will follow the left-hand turn and then go backwards on the right-hand turn. So now I'm gonna go and change the multiplier to 100 to make this go a little faster. So it moves up and then it goes backwards down onto the back tower there. And then now we can go to train three and then back to the tile inspector. And then with this turn selected, we're gonna rotate it twice so that it is right here. And it is already in the lowest tile inspector position, so that's good. So this straight piece of track, rotate it twice, and then now move that to the lowest position of the top three track pieces, and that should be all right. So now we're gonna move the track progress for train four to the top, and it should go backwards all the way down. If you did everything correctly, we have all of our trains in their position, so we can close the plugin, and then we can change it to the roto drop, and then unpause it, and let's see if it worked. So yep, all of our ride vehicles are now testing independently of each other, and they hit the chain lift, so now they're speeding up, and they will slow down right at the top, and then pause for the drop, and then they'll have a nice free fall before slowing down before the station, so everything works as it should. And if we look at the stats, it has the normal roto drop stats, so that's great. Now we're gonna open up the Ride Editor plugin and I have the latest version, so if you need to update, you can do that. And we're gonna click here and we can alphabetize our rides and hit Roto Drop 1. And then go here to Ride Type and select it. And then we're gonna change the ride type to the Single Rail Coaster. And then we're gonna hit the Apply Selected Changes and then the track is now going to appear as Single Rail Track. And so now we need to open up the Paint Scheme and we're gonna to go to the alternative color scheme one and make it invisible. And we're just going to make the top track pieces invisible. So with the paintbrush, I'm just gonna paint all of these and those curved top pieces of track there. And that's all we need to do. So this is our working ride, but it needs a little bit of theming and scenery. So I'm gonna lower the land around the tower, add some base blocks, and then add some sort of tower structure and change the colors, it looks pretty nice. Another option, if you open that Ride Editor plugin, what you could do is instead of the single rail coaster, use the Giga Coaster track, and it looks a little bit more dense. So a little bit more of a tower structure there. And then now we're gonna open the Tile Inspector and you can move the exit building to wherever you want. So copy it and then delete it. And I'm gonna paste it right here and then rotate it accordingly and hit Make Usable. 
And with the queue line in place, we can watch riders getting on and off the ride. Each vehicle operates independently of the other, but because it's a shared station, even though it's copied stations, all of the vehicles will load one at a time. You won't see riders getting on two vehicles at the same time. They do kind of walk across some of the vehicles or walk in front of each other as they're trying to get to the different ride vehicles. There's no way around that. You could actually move the entrance and exit buildings like this, but riders still have to walk a ways to get to some of the different ride carriages and they will always walk towards the exit and you can make the entrance and exit invisible and that's how the ride should look. I know it's not ideal to have the guests walking through the tower and through the vehicles sometimes to get on and off the ride, but overall I think it's really cool having all of the vehicles operate independently of each other. But if you want to do a different version of the ride, instead of the track on all sides of the tower, we can try something more like the Zoom and Jaro approach. So basically we're going to do the same thing and take the Rotodrop tower, but I'm not going to use the chain lift just to save some time. And then we're going to change it to the vertical drop coaster and build that top track piece here. And then with the tile inspector, we're actually going to rotate it two times and just leave it at the same elevation. So rotate it like this and then close the tile inspector and then open the construction window. And we're going to build straight track all the way down to the bottom and it's actually going to create a tunnel effect right here just go one underground and then go back to the top and then we actually want to delete this section here so delete that top vertical track piece and then open the tile inspector and rotate that top piece back around like this and then we can open the scenery manager plugin and we need to turn off the surface right here deselect that and then hit the select button here and now we need to select all three tiles here on either side of the tower and then we hit copy, and then you can paste it as many times as you want right next to it. I'm just gonna do three, but you could do more. And then now the scenery manager doesn't paste underground pieces, so we need to add back in that underground track piece for each tower. And with that done, we're going to now go to the top here and do steep to flat, and then four straight flat pieces. So steep to flat here, and then four straight track pieces, and then go to the last one, steep to flat and then we're going to do an s bend to the right and then delete this track piece here and move forward and do an s bend to the right and then build back in that missing track piece that we just deleted and then now we're going to open up the tile inspector and we just want to double check that this straight piece here is the lowest in the tile inspector order then move over here and let's check this straight piece and it is the lowest in the tile inspector order and then here we want the s bend to be lower than the straight piece in the tile inspector order and it is and then now we can change the vehicles to let's try the flying coaster this time three trains and i'm going to test it and then open the edit ride vehicles plugin select our ride vehicle here change the multiplier to 10 and we're going to move train one with the track progress up i forgot to pause the game so it's going to try and go back down but that's all right it should still work so past the s bend it should go on this straight track piece here yep that's how i want it so now for train two change the multiplier to 100 so this goes faster and as it's going backwards here i'm going to now move it forward onto this s bend and there we go we have all of our trains on each track and then now we can change it back to the roto drop and then we're going to open up the ride editor plugin and we are going to select Rotodrop 2, and then we're gonna hit Ride Type here, and let's change it to the Inverted Impulse Coaster, and then we're gonna hit Apply Selected Changes, and then now we have our ride, but we need to open up our paint scheme and do Alternative Color Scheme 1, make it invisible, and paint all of those track pieces here at the top, and then the only problem is these supports are still there, so open up the ride editor and change it to Color Scheme 1, unselect ride type, select visibility, change it to invisible, hit apply, and then there goes those supports. And then with the tile inspector, we just need to make that bottom track piece above the surface to get rid of that tunnel, and then do that for each one. Move the track above the surface, and that tunnel image will disappear. And then now, we just need a little bit of scenery, and I'm gonna put these base blocks in there. We open up the tile inspector, and we need to move the base blocks below the track piece so that they don't bleed through. And now we just need to make the entrance and exit invisible, and the ride is set to go. It would look really nice along the side of a building or a cliff or with some coaster behind it or something like that. It's a really fun one to build. I do think that the trains come into the station a little bit too fast in this example because I skipped that chain lift trick. But if you wanna learn more about that, you can check out my Speedy Tower rides tutorial and if you have any questions let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like 
and make sure to subscribe because next time I'm going to show you how to use invisible paths and scenery objects to create beautiful walkways and queue lines through your park. So stay tuned for more and consider supporting this channel by becoming a Patreon or YouTube member where you will receive early access to all my new videos as well as other benefits. Thanks for watching.